Hey, so um, yeah, welcome to another firmware update video. Uh, yes, we've done that. <laughs> I just released a new firmware update for MIDI Cake Up. Um, and so I thought I'd take you through the changes and what it's all about. Um, it's mostly menu and uh, key interaction changes for KeySync. Um, so I'll take you through it. I'm gonna start though with a bug fix. Um, a lot of you may have noticed that occasionally if you've got a mono synth, um, if you go in mono mode, very occasionally, doesn't turn off the last note. Um, it was a release issue, um, just a note release issue. It's all been resolved now in this version. Um, let's shove that back on poly. Let's start with the uh, global menu. Okay, so if you go into menu, uh, now you can see it is all very organized and tidy, and you can actually see which one of the menu you are on. Um, that's straightforward, given I'm going to be in the menu quite a bit in this video. I thought I'd show you that first. Um, so we've also done external MIDI tempo detection. Um, so if I mute those two, come out of here and see what you used to get was two little lines. Now um, it will try and pick up the external MIDI clock and we'll follow. Just a nice feature to have. While we're on the subject of USB host, uh, we've added support for MIDI through on the on the host so external device so uh, you can hear we're playing there even though all the arps are muted um, it's just going through um, also transport controls so we can start and stop it again over a usb midi device oh nothing running but you get the idea And uh, equally, if we go into the menu and turn MIDI control to out, um, we can, oh, what I have to do is change the key step to uh, accept USB sync. And you see it should, ah, should start. So you get transport controls um, in and out over USB. Um, we've sorted out all the throughs and all the transport controls over all three of the um, MIDI device routes, um, MIDI DIN, USB host, and uh, USB over MIDI. Um, what else have we done? While we're in the menu, uh, MIDI through, you can disable. Um, channel sync, uh, so MIDI sync, as well as uh, the channel that you selected um, you can also set that to Omni, so basically multiple inputs um, and potentially different devices. Put it back to what it was. Um, what else have we got? Uh, we added a uh, live play feature um, such that you can toggle it to turn it on and off. So at the moment when you play on an external keyboard, I'll tell you what, let me turn MIDI through off a second. Live play. But that can be um, a bit in the way if you usually use um, the play controls on ARP and you want to preset your, your position. So rather than setting a chord and making a noise, or it's making a noise when I don't want it to, um, you can come into MIDI live play and turn it off. So now it just, it won't play any noise. And likewise on the keys, it will set the sync notes, but it won't do anything until you press play. Um, Back in the menu, what else we got? Program change channel will also do Omni and the LED brightness, you saw that before. So we've also added a new parameter. Um, let me show you what that does. Let me mute that one, select uh, the first ARP and let's go into set. And I'm going to just make sure I'm set up right. I'm going direction up, um, steps three, but let's, I'll tell you what, let's bump this up to eight, for example. Um, let's increase our, or let's set the time to something a bit reasonable and um, yes note so if you click the note button you'll get the note offset the offset mode which were the two previous parameters on that button and now you get note limit and with that off when you live play you get it playing lovely until you accidentally press just a single note by accident and what you're hearing there is the scale that's been set is just a single note scale. So it's just the C. And what happens is that it will play its sequence, um, but the only scale notes it's got is just the one. So it, it will octave jump up until it goes out of audio range. 
or down if your direction is down. Um, and so, yes, what can you do about that? Well, this note limit allows you to set the maximum range from the note that you're playing, your root note of your chord, to uh, the widest point in semitones. So, for example, if I set this to 20, if I set it to 23 semitones and just play that note again, what will happen is it will bounce around at the top of its limit. If I set that to uh, 24 semitones or two octaves, it'll hit that top C, so you get three Cs. You hear it hitting that higher C. Um, yeah, ev that even comes into effect when you're playing individual, well, multiple notes. So if we change that on the fly and bring it down, you see we've got much finer grain control over the, the range with it, within which those notes can occur. And uh, it's kind of cool. Let's set the bounce to something really boring. Um, and you hear that kicking in. Let's set it all the way up to 16 steps. Let's turn note limit off again. There it goes off the range. And you don't really want that when you press a single note. Because the last eight notes of the, even more, of the bar are uh, out of audio range. Um, so if we set the limit, what will happen is it will start playing the sequence but bouncing around on the limits of its, um, of its maximum range. So here we've got 13, um, which is actually makes some interesting creative idea um, patterns. Um, and uh, yeah, you can modulate that as well. So if we go into um, modulator and select at the end note limit and we'll pick a shape and we'll do that over let's say four bars and let's whack that right up um, you'll get a variance in the amount of uh, note limit modulation and over four bars you'll get that that varying so yeah it's another way to add more complexity to the sequences that you've uh, that you've got Turn it off for now. So there's a couple of bug fixes that we got round to as well, in addition to the first one, that main one, um, which includes uh, the sync note count was tweaked to improve the way the notes behave when you're playing. So if you um, hold notes and then add and release notes, um, it wasn't always quite keeping up with what you were doing. Um, that's fixed. And so, uh, lastly, we've made some changes to the uh, factory reset options. Um, as you may know, if you press and hold reset, it will take you to previously just an option to run a factory reset. Um, but now there's a couple of additional options that you've got. Um, you can access some of the memory, memory data. You can access that stuff. And if you do have a problem um, with your app, you can... Uh, give us a shout and then with this information we'll be able to help find what the problem is. Um, we also have two options for reset now, uh, the full factory reset and a soft reset which is a way of um, basically restarting ARP with new default settings but not losing your patches. And if you do get into trouble with ARP, should it occur, um, if you press and hold reset while you power on you'll get direct access to that, uh, to that menu and the ability to do a soft reset. Um, and yeah, there you go. That's it. Um, the firmware is uh, 1.5.3 or 1.4.3 if you're on one of the older devices that were bought before 2023. And uh, yeah, it's available on the website. So yeah, go get it. Thanks for watching. Cheers.